All right, here we go, Slim 400. Welcome to Vlad TV. Yep, thanks for having me, man. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna say thanks for being here, just thanks for being in general, because yeah. what, you, what you recently went through, uh, the fact that you're walking around doing interviews, going to the studio, and everything else like that is, is really a miracle. And we're gonna get into that whole story a little bit yeah, later, yeah, but I just wanna put that. that out there, man. You know, I know, I know you're you're a little bit hurt right now, but yeah. the fact that you know, like I, I'm really amazed as to what I'm seeing right now. You know, <laughs> it's definitely a testament to to your strength. Yeah, it's a blessing, man. Absolutely. Well, it's your first time here. Uh, let's go ahead and get into your story. So, you were actually born in Germany. Yes, uh, my father basically um, was in the military. He just probably um. He probably just um, what you call it uh. Discharge. Not discharge. He um. R retired? Huh? Retired? Yeah, retired. I'm I'm tripping. <laughs> yeah, he just retired probably a couple of years ago. But him, my mom was in Germany when they had me, so I basically came to California in the states when I was probably like 11 months. Mm -hmm. So but, since you... 11 months, that's all I know is California. But your parents were actually from Compton? No, nah, my mom, she from like uh, Mississippi. And my pops, he kind of like from Oklahoma. Oh, okay. But as they was younger, my dad moms moved to um, California and like Watts or something. Well, Compton first, and they met at Compton High. And my mom's, you know, she moved to Compton with her, with her moms. So they met at Compton High. And it was all from there for them. Okay, so your dad is in the army, right? Yeah, he was. He was. He gets stationed in in Germany. Uh huh. Your mom flew out. Yeah, he basically flew her out. Mm hmm. And um, they got married, and from there, shit had me, I guess. Okay, they had you, but then you moved back to the states yeah. with just your mom. Yeah, because I guess certain things weren't going right within their relationship or stuff. I don't know, but. All I know is I was 11 months when I um, got off the plane into the states of um, United, you know, America, as I should say. Okay. And did your dad come back to the U.S. also, or he stayed out there? Yeah, he um, he came back here and there. Okay, so he was for like a... visits. And, okay. You know his breaks and all that. Okay, so but you were primarily raised by your mom. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah. Okay, siblings. Huh? Any uh, brothers, sisters? I got a sister on my dad's side. She live in Kentucky. Okay. So I talk to her every now and then. So it was really just like an only child situation. Yeah, to be just real, you yeah. You and your mom. Uh-huh. Okay. And then you moved to Spruce Street in Compton. Shit, when I, like I said, 11 months, that's all I knew was Spruce. Okay. So when we, when we got off that plane and my grandma, which is my mom's mother, came and got us, we went to Spruce. And from there, shit... Okay. You know? So now, here you are, growing up in Spruce Street mm -hmm. in Compton. What starts to happen as you get into your teens? Shit, I done seen shootouts, uh, you know, niggas gambling, fights, police taking people to jail, um, car wrecks. Uh, you name it, bro. It was just all type of things that was going on to where everybody that I seen, they kind of was embracing me. You see what I'm saying? On some like little homie type stuff. So I went off that just being around certain people and watching what, them, what, watching what they was doing to the point where it was like, I want to do it. You feel me? And that's how I kind of got turned out. You know what I mean? You know, you talked about you know, you have songs and everything else like that about yeah. being Pyru. You know, you have, your biggest song is actually called Pyru. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when did you get kind of involved in all that? I say, um, I start really being affiliated, you know, with a gang about like, shit, like 13, 14. Okay. Yeah. So this is Treetop Pyru. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm not familiar with Compton. Like, for example, uh -huh. Mob James is becoming a regular guest on Vlad TV and he's mm -hmm. Mob Pyru. So that's a whole different section. Whole different section. Yeah. Okay. In terms of like numbers, are you guys a large number crew? Yeah, you could say that. Okay. Yeah, we, we very deep. 
Okay. So you're 13, 14, that's when you get mm-hmm. involved. Did you get jumped in? Me personally, it's like me growing up right there, I feel like I just start doing stuff with homies to just like, like involve myself within them. So as I'm growing up and being around all the people that's from there and we doing all the negative things and all this other stuff, it was just a nasty, like, oh, he from the gang, he from the gang, he from the gang, and I just kept going with it. So I ain't really like to go through no fighting shit. It was just the shit I was doing already just put me in that situation of being down and for the crew, you feel me? That type of life involves a lot of losses. So you talked about shootouts and everything uh-huh. else like that. How old were you when you started seeing that? Shit. 11, shit. 11 10, years old, like, you saw a shootout. Hell yeah. Like, okay. You had other neighborhoods trying to come through our neighborhoods and get at the dudes that was hanging on my block. You see what I'm saying? Which was the older cats and the older Gs. And certain hoods ain't too far from my hood. You can cross the next main street and be in somebody else's section. You can go in the back of my hood and cross over that main street and be in somebody else's hood. So you got Chris back here. Pyro's on this side, Pyro's on that side, Pyro's on that side, Crips at this angle. It was just, it's so fast just to be in somebody else's hood. So for them to want to be on missions, they come from the back up the front towards our shit and catch niggas doing whatever they doing. And my partners have to be on, on, on point. So I didn't see it all like that. Okay. And this is all documented. You know, this has been talked about for sure to death. You know, and I remember uh, I'd written, I was working with Game a while back, uh-huh. back when he was first starting, when he was still living in Compton, you know, uh, with Black Wall Street. And I remember, you know, being in some of these houses and there's cameras, you know, multiple yeah. angle, you know, there's screens, like a flat screen with multiple cameras. People are doing, you know, it's almost like a military situation. People are doing watches. You know, people have to be on certain corners to make sure that nothing happens. Yeah, because that's uh, like the others going to try to sneak up on you and right. come within that little area that they feel like they can kind of run up on you in. So them cameras going to be necessary. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, they, they talked about how, you know, I remember I was friends with the owners of Royal, Royal Blunts and they sent a case over to them. And they were telling me how happy they were because they, they felt like they were risking their lives to go to the corner store yeah. to get a pack of blunts. Hell yeah. And just living in that type of mentality, man, as an outsider, just sounds crazy. But for you, this is regular. I feel like in certain situations, I'm sending certain people to stores to get my shit too because any given moment, anything can happen. Okay. Period. Were you losing friends along the way? Yeah, I lost a couple of... Um... Friends, bro, yeah. relatives, like that is a part of life, I guess, bro. Like you know. Well, what changed you after that situation? I feel the first go around, nothing really changed me. It's just I was staying out of people hoods. You see, what I'm saying I was, I'm taking the main streets now. You see, what I'm saying I'm be where all the other cars at. And if y'all want to do something right there, then y'all, y'all, y'all brave. But for the most part, I was going through back streets and taking shortcuts and which I shouldn't have been doing but you know Friday night traffic you know you know shit I'm trying to get there fast as I can but you know within doing that other shit occurred were you getting arrested along the way yeah minor shit weed um no insurance and warrants stuff okay. like that nothing serious no, nah, I might have a gun charge. Other than that, like, it was minor shit. I ain't probably did no more than two months, ever. Okay. So, so the gun charge was just a slap on the wrist, basically. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So at what point did the rapping come about? Um, just being around my homie life and him just always just freestyling in, in studios and once Game picked him up to be from Black Wall Street, I'm like, okay, this nigga really oh, got signed. But wait a minute, I think I, yeah, Young, young life? life, Young Life, yeah, yeah, I know that name. So that's my partner from high school and okay. middle school. So for me to always be around him and him freestyling and just 
writing raps and going to the studios doing songs that would encourage me to like get on my shit because I was just in the street selling weed and doing petty things so he was like man like get up on this and I'm like alright so I started writing showing him my my raps he was helping me out like you know changing words changing bars and um after so long, I just started taking it serious and, like, kind of doing it on my own. And shit, here I am now, you know what I mean? Okay. And you stuck with the music. Yeah, definitely. You, you started taking that serious. Did you yeah. start to, at what point did you say, okay, like, this is going to be my main shit? Um, I want to say after my relative, Baby Trey, got killed, I was like, damn, like, okay, I got shot. He got shot, but he ain't here. That just motivated me to be like, all right, what you going to do, Slim? Because these streets is really wild. I already done got hit. My cousin dead. So it's like, I'm going to go into this, like, really, like, really stick to this and try to make this my career. So I lost a family member and, and, and kept in mind, like, I got to I gotta do something, bro. Because if I don't do it, I could be a victim of these streets and, out here to see somewhere you feel me yeah man uh you know because we just lost nipsey that part and, man not, not too long ago still going on to this day so you got this mood correctly out here in these streets yeah I, i've interviewed him before oh um, it feel good I'm, I'm proud of my city you know what i'm saying i'm proud of the radio stations for supporting the artists i'm proud of the artists for working hard and staying in the game when we didn't have no outlets I'm proud of the city for buying tickets to the concerts, you know, promoting to their friends, traveling around the world with the mixtapes, putting people on. I'm proud of the venues for booking us and giving us chances. L.A. is very segregated and L.A. has a bad reputation because of the gang culture. Mm -hmm. But our generation clearly on something else. When me and YG collab and I go to Compton in his hood and with all my jewelry on, and I get love. And he come to the hood and get love. And shoot videos with his homies in the hood and get love. And we would run into each other every so often. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like that image that people portray of how Nipsey was, was exactly how he was when I first met him and when yeah, we did yeah. interviews and, and everything. Cool he was very, cat. very consistent, cool cat, for very real. serious. And, um, you know, for example, I had Big U on here. Nipsey came out. He the first artist and the only artist ever to never come out and claim a city. He claimed a set. He claimed Long Beach. He claimed a set. And he claimed one of the most violent sets on records. So when we start moving, I used to purposely watch all our videos, make sure. And I used to tell Steve, no, that video can't go out because in the back of there, they got somebody set crossed out. Mm. And that video, no, you can't do this. And we used to purposely like make sure we wasn't dissing people, but representing Representing the turf. Yeah. I had him on here not too long ago. Okay. And he, he was telling me about how, you know, when he first started managing Nipsey, that he consciously tried to, you know, utilize Nipsey to try to have Crips and Bloods cooperate together yeah, yeah. on the music side. Mm -hmm. You know, they would do video shoots and he would look look through the footage and say, no, you can't use this shot because so-and-so's hood gets crossed out yeah. in the background. Let's let's take that shot out. And yeah, let's have him wear red more often just so it's not so polarizing. Yeah. And, and, and you know, because I, I remember, you know, there was, there was a point that Crips and Bloods could not do music together. They yeah, could not right. be in the same yeah, studio yeah. together. <laughs> you know, even, even during Death Row's heyday, they were like the only ones that were pulling that off. Yeah. Just because there was so much money, but other than that, you can't be in the studio. No -go. You can't be in the studio with like a DJ Quick if you're a Crip. Like, yeah. <laughs> there was too much politics. Do you felt like Nipsey Nipsey changed a lot of that? Yeah, he um he was one of them dudes that just made it his business to you know keep it humble and respectful, and it was basically like whoever like he felt was cool enough to be around, he was around him embraced them, gave them game, and that showed others to where if you are on some negative stuff, it's that you're going to have to tone it down a little bit or you're going to be lost in the sauce because this is what's going on to daytime. And I feel like he didn't change a lot of lives just within, like, 
the negativity. You see what I'm saying? Because L.A. County is, this growing up in L.A. County is hard for number one. And on top of that, just getting people to come together, you know what I mean, and become one and work together, like, like that's even harder. So if you got a certain individual that can risk his life within doing that, like, that's a blessing. And I feel Nipsey was our blessing to L.A. County in a sense of bringing Crips and Bloods together to make a change, you see what I'm saying, to show the world, like, what couldn't be done years ago is be is being done within the 2000s. You feel me? Well, yeah, I remember when Big U organized that gang march. Yeah. And you had Rolling 60s and A Trey gangsters. Yeah, yeah. And I remember he explained to me how serious that beef was, where Hell it almost yeah. split LA. Yeah. You had to be either cool with the, with the 60s or the A Trey's. Yeah. Because it was such a, a large scale conflict. And them being together, marching together, and it was peaceful, and everything was like something that hadn't happened in like 40 years. Yeah. How do you feel when you, when you heard about that situation and your relationship with Nipsey, him being in that neighborhood that he felt comfortable in, but it was still, you know, the hood? And, and I remember there's a famous interview I did with um, Boosie. You know, those are the guys, those are the guys who want to hurt you, those guys, those guys who've been looking at you your whole life and building up envy. They build up envy to where they can't do nothing now. They can't, they can't stop you from getting money. You don't want to be their friend or associate. You can't come in their crew and get any kind of money. They're, they're too big for you to even try to beef with. So you know what? I'll just take your life. Where he talked about how most rappers get killed in their own neighborhood, yeah. and, and Nipsey unfortunately has kept that dialogue going after there was a, a long, long string of rappers that that's happened to. I feel um, within heart, he was apparently not saying he wasn't scared of death, but it was like a he ain't just not gonna go where he feel he want to go. It's like. Whatever happens, gonna happen. You feel me? You can't run from death. You can't run from certain things. If it's meant to happen, it's gonna happen. But he went there to own negativity. It was more so positive and helping his homie still. And I just feel like when I heard it, it you know, it it got to me, bro. Cause I'm working at the moment. You feel me? Shooting a video, and once I'm getting a call on the news, it was it was shocking to me because. Out of everybody, I'm like, damn, Nipsey. But I feel he would took just to open everybody else's eyes up within L.A. County and the world. Like, like if it happened to him and we look up him, we look up to him the most. It could happen to everybody. So that right there kind of, you know, got a lot of people thinking different, moving different. Um, others might be working with others when they wasn't working with them. Or they just stand to themselves, but knowing what's really going on in these streets. When Eric Holder got arrested for that, did that bring any degree of closure to you, or, or um, do you not care? Me personally, I feel like, man, whether it's closure or not, it was some bull stuff, bro, and it shouldn't have happened, but, like, I can't really even say because... He sitting up in jail, then he dead. It's like, 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 what's good for us that's still on these streets? You feel me? Because it's like that was the bro, and he was really like telling them stories that we looked up to, or really wanted to download when we heard his new song coming out. We was quick to download and see what he talking about on it. So for that dude to take all that from us, that's that's bull stuff, bro. But on another hand, like I say, it, it didn't, it didn't, it got people thoughts, you know what I mean, different. You see what I'm saying? Because once a person's still here on earth, you ain't really thinking about certain things on the half of if he was dead, you feel me? Because once a nigga deceased, we think different. But for him to still be here, it's like we still maneuvering how we maneuver. So him in jail, it ain't. 
it ain't make me happy or none of that. You feel me? And I really don't care, but it just like our bro, like we would never see this guy again ever, cause because of this nigga, it's like it's a cold game out here, man. That's why you gotta watch yourself and be around a solid few niggas that 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 keep their eyes open to these streets and watch your surroundings. Period. Well, let's, you know, then this brings me to your situation. So, the, the shooting that happened, uh -huh. it happened in Compton. Yeah. Okay. So, walk me through what exactly happened. I feel like I'm going to keep it short and simple real quick. I was just pulling up on my block within my neighborhood to, you know, holler at my family before I kind of hit the road to go handle my business and, you know, do shows and et cetera. Okay, so you're in your neighborhood in your car. Yeah. Okay. And I guess you, you have some other people in the car with you also, right? Yeah, I had two bros in the car, but uh, my vehicle was hella tinted. So when I jump out to go see my family, like, I guess these dudes was already on the block waiting for anybody to pull up to do whatever they was going to do, but I was the one they caught. So as I'm walking, they already about to get the popping. So once I hear shots, shit, I get to trying to run, duck, get behind cars to get to my folks, like, garage and house. And um, with me kind of halfway getting there, I kind of fall. And my and one of my relatives come out the house while they still shooting at a nigga. They, they pulling me and dragging me in, talking to me, trying to keep me alive. And um, it worked. You feel me? So ambulance came and took me from there, bro. But I still fully ain't myself. I'm steady. I'm out. You feel me? I ain't really know what's going on. But like I said, I got hit nine times. When I did wake up, I'm blurry. I'm seeing my family, but really don't know who is who. And the doctor talking to me, asking me questions just to see how much of me as me is here with them. And um, I'm answering halfway correctly. Then the way I'm talking, it's like I'm mumbling. You see what I'm saying? I ain't really fully pronouncing shit right and et cetera. So I just like, just stop, like. I just stopped talking. It's like, man, fuck it. I'm just going to stop talking to the doctor. Okay, so you weren't actually in your car when the shooting no, happened? No, I jumped out of it. Oh, you jumped out? And my bro stayed in the car. Okay, and and your friends didn't get, shit, didn't get shot? Nah, like I say, my tent so black. I got front tent on my front window, sides, all that. So once I jumped out and it's dark, they just thinking I'm by myself. They don't see nobody. Okay. So once they see me on the street walking... It was like, I got him. They not worrying about shooting my car, who in my car. They was focused on me. But this is your own block. Yeah. With your family mm -hmm. who lives on that block. So did your family actually see all this happen? No, nah, because they was in the house. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Doing whatever they're doing. But once they heard shots, they ran to the door trying to see really like what's going on. And once they seen me, then my little relative come out and like try to like you know what I mean help me out. Yeah. Man, like it's one thing to be you know because your last situation happened in someone else's neighborhood. You said yeah. you shouldn't have been there. Yeah. This is close to home. Uh huh. They really try to assassinate you. Hell yeah. At your, not your home, but your, you know your your block, your family's home. Yeah. I mean, this just sounds crazy. You had been shot before. So when you first felt the bullets, what, what started to go through your head? Honestly, man, I just, I just, I was trying, I, in my mind, bro, I'm trying to get away. And I'm thinking about what I'm supposed to be doing. My daughter, you see what I'm saying? My family and shit. After that, I'm just like, damn, like it might be over, you feel me? And as they study shooting, I'm like, man, I'm damn near about to give up. Like, man, like, man, it's over. But for my folks to come out and grab me, that kind of motivated me to stay, like, like alive and do what they telling me to do to keep me alive, you feel me? So, so this is your relatives came out and grabbed you or, or your yeah, friends in the car? Yeah, my folks, yeah. So they're actually risking their lives. Yeah. 
why they still shoot the shooters are still are still there so they're risking their lives to save you Uh knowing they might get killed in the process yeah that's some real soldier shit yeah right there man i i mean i'm I'm kind of tearing up just even talking about it for real that's some real fuck that's some real love right there man a lot of people would have just stayed in the house and waited for the shooting (laughs) to end i'll feel you and you would have probably died right there yeah that part wow yeah that's uh, that's that's incredible, man. I'm, <laughs> that's something you can't pay back. Yeah. So you get shot nine times. Yeah. But I assume that every time they they shot, they didn't hit you, so they must have let off a lot more. They let off hella shots, but only nine hit me. Only nine. Yeah. That, that's. I mean, people die from one gunshot. Yeah. But where did you get hit exactly? Shit. I want to say I got skint on my head, my ear, my face. Top, back, front, stomach, like. So you got shot in the stomach? Yeah. I understand they had a staple? Uh-huh. Your stomach? Yeah, I still got it right here, too. Okay. So they take you to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Were you thinking you're not going to make it as you're going through this? Um. Actually, I can't really say what I was thinking, but I would say I thought, like, in, in, in reality, I'm... I, what I remember, uh, I was like dreaming of something, bro. Like, it seemed like I was somewhere with homies just doing some shit, but I was really must have been in an ambulance truck or I must have been at the hospital at this time, but in mine, it felt like I was dreaming. You know what I mean? So I really can't say like what I was thinking, but it just felt like a dream. Okay. So they had to operate on you, I assume. Huh? They had to operate on you? Yeah. And they had to pull out the bullets. Yeah. Any of the bullets still in you? Um, I got one of my jaw still in me. In your jaw? Yeah. Why can't they pull that out? I don't know, but I got another doctor's appointment coming up. I'm going to check on that. Okay. So at one point, after all the operate, was it multiple operations? I had probably like four different surgeries. Four surgeries? Different surgeries, yeah. Right, because when you first heard the news, and you're like, Slim 400 got shot nine times, and he's in... I see you. Yeah. You're, you're thinking he may not make it <laughs> nine times, and you're hearing about a surgery. You're like, okay, this may not work out, unfortunately, but you actually pulled through. Yeah. Do you remember in between the surgeries, or do they just happen all one after another? And you just wake up after all of them? I would just wake it up after all of them. But the last one that I did have, I remember going into the actual. Um, I was like, I went to this room, and they laid me flat on this bed. So I'm looking up, and a guy was like, look, I'm about to give you this medicine, and you're going to go to sleep. And um, when you wake up, you're going to have staples on you, and you're going to be cool. I'm like, all right. But at this moment, my front had hella tape on it, and it was just looking ugly. So when I woke up, I didn't. I, I forgot where I was at. You feel me? Because yeah. the medicine had you so this out of it. When I woke up from the last surgery, I was like, "Damn, where am I?" Like, like, like. Right, cause I, you're probably on morphine, right? Yeah. Like real, so the heaviest, the heaviest narcotic. Out. Yeah. It, back in the day, I was in Vegas and had to do some in Vegas. So when I woke up, it's, it, it it felt like I was in the hospital in Nevada. But the whole time I'm I'm out here in LA. It's like that's crazy. It's hallucinating, basically. But they had me after the surgery, they had me still laying on this bed for probably like another 30, 40 minutes to I, I came back back. You feel me? And once I actually came back, the the guy that rolled me from my room to down there, he came back, like, you ready to go back up? I'm like, then that's when I'm start talking, not talking to myself, but thinking to myself like, damn, I'm, I'm, oh, this is where I'm at. You <laughs> feel me? And I went back to my room and I was cool. So at one point, the surgeries are over. Uh-huh. And you wake up and you're conscious and you understand where you are, yeah. what just happened. Yeah, what's going on. And right. everything, you're starting to stabilize. What was really the first emotion that you started feeling? Was it, I'm happy to be alive, or I'm angry about what just happened? Nah, I feel like I'm happy, I'm alive, and 
I'm able to like still like be with my family, my daughter. You see what I'm saying? To like have another chance in life. You feel me? Is this your daughter right here? Yeah. Okay. So it was a it was a happy feeling. I'm still angry inside because nobody want to go through this type of shit. But in reality, it's like you know whatever happened happened. You feel me? It was part of God plan, and um, you know I got to deal with this type of stuff. But on the other on the other side of it. I got another chance at life, so I'm I'm feeling a little better. You see what I'm saying? The doctor's telling me I'm going to live. The doctor's letting me know surgeries went good. Certain bullets is out. Just take this medicine, do this, do that, and you're going to be all right. So I went off that. Can I ask your daughter a question on camera with you, or do you want to keep her off? Like, I'd rather keep her off, okay. bro. You see what I'm no saying? No problem. Yeah, Th yeah. That's why I asked. Yeah. So what happened when your daughter first went into that hospital room and saw her dad in that state? I feel um, when I looked at her, because my mom ain't even tell me she was coming up there. She would just say that a couple of people gonna come visit you. And I'm thinking to myself, like, who is she talking about? But um, when I see my daughter walk in, like, I know when she happy and I know when she kind of like, like down. So when I seen her face, it was like a a sad little puppy face, like, you see what I'm saying? So off the back, I'm like, damn, like, like, she hot, she mad. So I just was talking to her the normal way I talked to her, asking her how she doing it there, et cetera, et cetera, that I had her get on my bed just to get a little closer to me, you see what I'm saying? And she got up there, we was talking normally, and um, about what we gonna do when I get out, and. We went from there. She stayed in there probably like an hour and a half, probably two, and went on about our business. But my thoughts talking to her was like, I can't keep I can't keep putting her through this. You see what I'm saying? So I got to do better as a dad. You feel me? I got to watch my behind as a dad and know it's the reason for me being here. And I got to provide and really, you know what I mean, like do other things. Yeah, I, I can just imagine, uh, you know, as a father, yeah. to have to go through that with, yeah. with with your little girl. So, we heard about this situation, you know, we reported on it. Uh -huh. And when you hear someone gets shot nine times, you think, all right, they're going to be in the hospital for like six months or a year. Uh -huh. and, there's going to be rehabilitation and yeah. there's going to be a long process. And I think, you know, when I mentioned the situation with Trey D, uh, you know, we, I think he, he kind of like did a lighthearted joke about, Oh yeah, he ain't going to be in the studio anytime soon. Like he just got shot nine times. Yeah. You know, he had friends that have been through similar situations, but 15, 15 days later, you walked out of that hospital. Yeah. And I feel it got a lot to do with just me being on, the 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 um the nurses, you see what I'm saying, and the doctors. Like, look, and hard I'm feeling like this. I think I can do this. And they like, look, we don't want you to move too fast. We just wanna make sure before you do leave, if you able to leave, you you kinda like at least halfway up a hundred percent or at least seventy five, eighty. And I'm like, look, man, I got things to do. That's what I kept telling them. They looking at me dumbfounded and stupid. Like, look, bro, you just got shot. You got to chill. I'm like, look, man, what do I got to do? And they was like, look, only thing I can suggest is you just eat the food we give you and just keep taking this medicine and letting this IV work with you. I'm like, all right, bet. Right, because right, you had dialysis also for yeah, your kidneys. For like, like, damn it, like three days, four days. And that's like the worst thing, cause you gotta really sit there like, don't move. And if you if you just move your neck like this, the shit'll get the beep it, and they gotta start over. And it's like, man, so you gotta sit there just still for like four hours, three and a half hours. Wow. And you know, once you have to sit still, you get the itching, and <laughs> you want to move your foot, and you want to move your hand, and it just seemed like that naturally happened when yeah. you have to sit still. Of course. So it was just like a, it was just, I don't know, for me, I was just getting angry with it, bro. And, and I, I told the doctor, like, man, look, man, I don't want to do this. Or if I do do it, have me in my room. Have them come hook up this shit in my room because 
I'd rather be watching TV and knowing what's going on versus just downstairs where they had me at watching the doctors hook up other people to the dialysis and running in and out. It's like that's annoying and it's irritating. So out of three to four times, they came up twice in my room and then I did it the last time downstairs. So the last time I did it, I was comfortable. And I um I had them give me um some medicine to kind of like knock me out. So once I took them little pills that they gave me, I woke up probably like an hour and a half within like the three hours that they wanted me to do. And um I said, uh, like, where I'm at right now? How many hours I done did? They was like, you had like 145, almost two hours. I'm like, all right. So once I really hit another 15 minutes, I might like, look, bro. Um, is it a way I can get a half of another pill or something or something? He was like, look, we're going to give you another little piece. That gave me another little piece. That was another hour. And that's how I got kind of done with it. But for the first two times, I was just angry. Then they put the little, um, the little thing on your arm to check your blood pressure and all that. It was getting so tight. I'm like, bro, you can't move it. Cause it'll it'll pump up so much to where I'm like ah ah like man take it off like <laughs> they thinking I'm tripping and really losing my mind but to me it was hurting so that dialysis like I don't I don't approve of that bro but that was refreshing my kidneys yeah and 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 showing the doctors I'm gonna be able to like pee you know what I mean drink what I want to drink eat what I want to eat without having to be on a, a, a certain type of diet that they consider it. Yeah, well, I mean, I interviewed Keek the Sneak yeah. recently. I don't know if you heard of his story. Yeah, I know he, about him, his story and all that. Well, That's got, my boy. Yeah, I used to DJ for him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he got shot up. Yep, I'm already knowing the deal. And, and I did the interview with him, and he actually had the kidney machine on his lap yeah. during our interview that was having to clean his kidneys. Yeah. And he was on his way to prison, and he was just really, like, scared that once he got there, they, were, they weren't going to have the proper, you know, equipment and care for him that he might die. I'm like, damn, I should have had another option. I should have had ankle monitor. You know what I'm talking about? I just should have had another option other than y'all just locking me up. And then my condition, I can't be around nothing filthy. Everything got to be sanitized when you're dealing with me right now because I'm so easy to get infection. They move my spleen, meaning... My immune, my immune system is not as strong as it should be. Hmm. I can catch a cold and die. If, if I catch pneumonia, I can die. You know what I mean? Yeah. My immune system ain't strong as, as it should be. You know what I'm talking about? Anything yeah. can take me out. I can't catch a cold, a simple one. Yeah. And he was in a wheelchair. Yeah. So this is why I'm, I'm looking at you going like, yo, this is, this is really unbelievable because I know Keek, yeah, yeah. and I see where he is right now. He's lucky to be alive, but he's in not very good shape. Yeah. How much of leaving early was paranoia that the dudes who did it might come back to finish the job? Me personally, I ain't thinking about none of that, and I ain't feel no type of way about that, because from the way it happened and, and how it happened, not saying I put myself in that position, but I just know what to do and what not to do now. And man, thoughts run through my mind like they gonna be back on me or I'm gonna run to these niggas again, et cetera. It's like move correctly, be with my bros, and keep your eyes open to these streets. You feel me? I don't I don't trip on the negativity, you see what I'm saying? Well, in an interview you did, you said that what happened to you came from hate and jealousy. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it is, because what we doing it like it blow a lot of niggas' minds, bro. Cause niggas wake up broke, have to hit a lick. You see what I'm saying? Family members on them about paying bills or getting up doing something. Then you see these other cats out here in new cars and having money and doing this and et cetera. That's 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 hate. You see what I'm saying? It's like fuck them, fuck you know what I mean? So come yeah. on man. Uh, you know, in my interview with Boosie, he called it hypnotized with hatred. Mm -hmm. He said that. All right, now you hypnotized with hatred. I'm tired of hearing about him. 
I'm tired of hearing about this guy. I know what I'm going to do. And that's how it starts, man. They get hypnotized. They get hypnotized, man. When you're doing well, especially when other people were doing something similar when you started, and they keep having to see your name yeah. over and over again. And, that make them mad. And their probably. girlfriend's playing your song, and they're on YouTube, and your video comes up, and the radio comes on, your song's on there, and they're on Instagram, and someone reposts your shit. They start to get, you know, and that keeps building yeah. over and over again. They get hypnotized to the point where the only thing that they, they could do is want to kill you and just get, get you For out real. of there. I just seen niggas cussing up their girl. I just seen niggas throwing my CD out the windows and all type of stuff. And it's like, for what, bro? I don't even know you like that. It's just what they go through with they women or they, they family because of they just making them mad. You see what I'm saying? So for them to get mad from the next woman or the next nigga, it come back on me like, well, fuck him. Like, I don't got nothing to do with y'all, man. That's y'all little issue. Yeah, well, you said that a younger version of yourself would be looking for payback right now. Huh? You said that a younger version of yourself uh -huh. would have been looking for payback right now. Yeah, because I was just stuck in my ways in a sense of like just, I ain't care about me doing negativity. You see what I'm saying? And me being on a, on a, on a, how would I say it? Um, like, I just didn't care about either going to jail or even something happening. It was just like, bro, you ain't about to do this to my bros. You ain't about to just do this to me. But in reality now, I just look at it as I got a lot more to live for. You see what I'm saying? So what happened, I feel I got a clean slate. You know what I mean? So I can get back out here and get to doing the dumb shit, but who to say it ain't not going to happen again. So somewhere down this line, you got to grow up and um, just know your purpose is really wanted and do what it is that you're here to do, which is, like I said, rap, provide for my family, and line other people up in situations to where they can become a better person. You feel me? Well, I had Trey D on my show recently, and uh, when he was active, he ran into one of his uh, enemies. Uh -huh. one of his, you know, not anyone he knew, but an enemy yeah. gang. He got shot in the back. His lung collapsed. And, uh, you know, he had his, like, he had kids around, like, you know, some of his younger, you know, little nephews or cousins or something like that. And he got rushed to the hospital, and he made it. Yeah. And I asked him if the dude that shot him came in this room right now and sat down next to him and apologized to him, what would he do? And his answer kind of surprised me. That's right, homie. What's your name? All right, for sure. For sure. I appreciate that, homie. Apology wasn't even necessary. We was living that life at the time. You know, ain't no thing, man. For sure. If that give you some kind of closure or whatever, that's cool. Solid. Wow. He said, you know, I was out there doing the same thing. I was shooting the people. I was doing what he was doing. We were both active at that time. He's not active anymore. Yeah. He understands the game, he doesn't take it personally, and he's willing to move on. Yeah. I interviewed Yellow Beezy as well, recently, yeah. who recently got shot up. Yeah, that's my boy, yeah. I asked him that same question, he was like, Ain't no fucking apologizing. Yeah, no, yeah, that ain't no apologizing shit. We didn't went too far, ain't no apologizing. Fuck that, he's not walking <laughs> up out of here. Like, <laughs> you're, not, you're not gonna shoot me and, and just, you Not know. everybody different. So let's just say the dudes who shot you. Uh -huh. They came in there and said, you know something, we were tripping, you know, now that we look at the whole situation, we're, we're sorry. Yeah. We want to apologize for what happened. How would you take that? Me personally, being honest as a man, bro, like, I don't know. And ain't no shaking no hands. I'm not accepting your apology. And I don't even want to talk. That is how I always been as a man. And I feel certain things within me, being a man, ain't gonna change straight up. And I ain't gonna sit in here and lie to you. So I can't say I'm accept their apology. I ain't gonna shake their hand. I don't want nothing to do with you niggas. I don't want to talk to you niggas. I'm just gonna keep it regular how I'm gonna keep it. And that just stand to myself and on my grind and stand focused about getting my bag. You feel me? Other than that, 
all this other shit that they talking about, I want to talk about is for the birds, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Straight up. Have you been back to that block since then? Um, no, nah, to be real, I've been so busy, I ain't had time to even do it, and if I did have the time, I'ma just still chill because that is me putting myself back in situations that might can occur again. So that been my block for so many years, bro, and I didn't did so much over that block. It's like if I got the opportunity to do other things, I'm about to start doing other things versus just chilling on the block. And that was my issue. Yeah. I'm so over the block. I'm just chilling on the block. Whether I got shows to do, money to make, verses to do, studio sessions. I always made it my point in my business to pull up on the block for a couple of minutes and see the same people, chop it up, smoke weed, and get out of there. That's my MO. But today, after this, I can't say I'm going to do that no more. Yeah. I, it's like it got to be something different because, like, like, what you getting out of it? It's like you doing the same shit, Slim. And... That ain't getting me nowhere. Trady says something interesting in one of our interviews. Yeah, yeah keeping it real, you said is the worst community worst it's, it's, phrase. It's, it's in the, the worst phrase to ever hit the urban community because mentally you attach that to I have to continue doing the same things I did before I became who I am now. Right. And that's a fallacy. If you don't go back to your old neighborhood you're not keeping it real. Yeah. If you do go back to your old neighborhood with a bodyguard, you're not keeping it real. Oh, look at that punk ass bodyguard. Well, you think he's gonna stop something? See, he, he not real. And and no matter what you do, there's going to be a group of people that're gonna accuse you of not being real. Yeah. So say I so I say this. See me, like, in my section, I don't got no problems and no issues with with nobody, cause. I'm a certain type of dude that be on my tip and handle my own business, you feel me? So I get head of love and respect. So if I do pull up with a bodyguard, they already know it's because of other situations and other things that have occurred in the past. They not looking at a nigga like he ain't keeping the real or he changed. Like, oh, that's out. Me doing this is like just to have an extra set of eyes with me while I'm out here in these streets, you know, running from A to B, trying to handle my business. Other than that, yeah, you're going to have hate and people talking behind your back and saying whatever they're going to say, but niggas ain't saying it in a nigga face. Niggas ain't letting me know they saying it. You feel me? I'm hearing it through a woman or another nigga. You feel me? And once I hear something through another woman or another nigga, I don't even care about that because at the end of the day, they might be lying. So I, I, I tend to one ear out the other when it comes down to shit like that. You feel me? Well, you come out of the hospital after 15 days and then you go to the studio. Yeah. Is that the first place you go to pretty much? Um, no, actually, I went, I went to my attorney house just to get out of like L.A. And me and him had a long talk about just my up and coming events, um, certain contracts he was receiving, certain phone calls he was receiving from management, and um, who was really concerned about me. So me and him talked for, for a good couple hours, and um, as me doing that in the valley, I was just thinking to myself, like, damn, like, I'm really still here. So I told him, like, man, I'm, I'm about to get back in the lab. So I call my manager, Mud, like, look, bro, like, like, let's set some shit up. And shit, he set it up within a blink of an eye. Like, look, we can go do this. What? Let's go. And um, at that time, I was walking a little slower than this, probably getting a little dizzy here and there. So the walks that I was walking, I'm probably jumping out the car straight to the door. You feel me? While my people go park or whatever. But in the booth, if I did a 12, I'm doing four, then go sit down. Go do another four, come sit down. Do another four, come sit down. Listen to it, bam. Talk about it, critique it. Might change some shit. Then I did the hook. And as I'm getting back in my mode, I'm like, man, I'm back, Larry. Like, let's do this shit. 
did another did another song. So um, me and the homegirl C Star, we did um, we did a hook. Yeah, you know I mean, so me and her kind of like worked on a hook together, knocked that out, and she like, man, it don't seem like you got shot up. Like you seem like you the same. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I take that. Yeah, I take that if y'all want to. I'm still hurt, but I'm not playing it off. It's just. I feel it hard. I have to start doing what I used to do in order to get back in my mode because if I sit around the house or just 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 be on some just chilling shit, I'm a, I feel I'm going to just always chill. So I'm motivating myself and I'm making it my business to walk. I'm making it my business to hit a studio. I'm making it my business to do a verse because that's my whole life. This is my career. So. I'm taking my time about it, and I ain't trying to move too fast, but what am I waiting on for real? You see what I'm saying? I got my medicine on me. You feel me? I got a couple of people with me, so if I pass out, they got me or whatever, yeah. but I'm not thinking about none of that, but if it was to happen, like, I'm ready for whatever, bro. Yeah, I mean, I just interviewed Conway the Machine from, yeah. you know, Griselda, and mm -hmm. he got shot in the head, and half his face was paralyzed permanently. Yeah. You end up getting uh, Bell's palsy? Yeah, like it's from the nerve damage, they said. Like, yeah. Because from getting hit in the neck, my shit was fucked up. Like, this whole, like, my, I couldn't really, like, lift nothing. I had to I had to work all that shit back out. Like, I couldn't, couldn't walk to the bathroom on my own. To this day, the right side of his face uh, is just completely paralyzed. And he talked about the process. He said for a while he just stayed in the house. Yeah. He didn't want to go outside because you know, he didn't want to hear people. See, some people will want to stay in the house yeah. and just chill and stay away from the public eye because the way they look. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't look too bad. You know what I mean? I'm wearing this rag because of my ear, whatever the case may be, but for the most part, I still look myself, I still sound myself. Certain yeah. people get shot and they're not they self. Yeah, he so had to, that's he had to gonna learn. make you stay in the house, you feel me? Well, first they told him that he was never gonna walk again. Yeah. But then he learned to walk and then he had to learn to talk. Mm -hmm. Then he had to learn to rap. <laughs> Cause mm -hmm. think about if half your face is just not functioning anymore, you gotta it changed your voice and he it was Yeah. You know, and he turned around and got a deal with Shady Records and got a song with Eminem and he getting a big album coming that's out. Me, it's... That's me saying, don't listen to nobody. Yeah. That's me saying, believe in God, pray, and, and know you gonna do better. You see what I'm saying? Having in your mind, you gonna do better because you can listen to whoever you want to listen to, but nine times out of ten is they telling the truth. Is everything they saying is valid? Like, like for us to hear all this other shit on the internet about me losing legs and mouth wired and not gonna be able to do this and do that no more. That's for the birds, bro, that's out. I feel nobody really know what the fuck is going on until you yourself put it out there. Anything else you hearing before I talk, that's what somebody else thinking or what they're just talking about to up their status and they, 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 they views and all that shit. You know what I mean? The internet's a cold game. And somebody gonna wanna be the first to put any and everything out. But that shit ain't valid. So I'm a living witness, bro. Nine times, walking on my own, talking on my own, and doing the same shit I, I was doing before I left. It just, it's taking a little more time to be 100% about doing it, but I ain't just, just in the house until I feel like I'm 100%. Right. I'm out the house at 85% in any streets getting to 100. Like, I ain't playing. Right, because you lost hearing in one of your ears, right? Yeah, right now I can't even hear out this ear. Yeah. So every time I'm on the phone, I'm on this. I be mean, huh, huh, like, yeah. that shit's so irritating, but I'd rather be doing that than, like I said, be deceased, you see what I'm saying? Thank the Lord for everything that he did for me and what's going on, me, going on with me right now, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, 50 Cent got shot nine times. That part. Uh, Tupac, <clears throat> Tupac got shot five times. Yeah. Game got shot five times. You know what I'm oh, saying? Game so, got shot five times? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. I know you got shot. I didn't so, know the details. Everybody's situation be different, bro. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm 
looking at a miracle right now. Cause when um when Fifty just hit me on the um on the Instagram, he was like, "Yeah, man, I know about that lucky number nine. <laughs> and that is kind of like threw a smile on my face, and I'm thinking uh, to myself, like, he a fool, but in reality, he 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 being real. So Fifty straight up. Fifty personally hit you and say, "I, I know what you're going through right yeah, now." Yeah, he 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 actually put me up on his Instagram, and he wrote some shit and tagged me in it, like, "Hey, bro." I know about that lucky number nine. Like, like some niggas don't make it out, and it, 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 it's hard to go through. But, but you a tough boy. Like, you a tough boy. Ice water. Mm. And uh, later on that day, his um his assistant, yeah, his assistant, yep, assistant, hit his assistant hit us like, like, like tell Slim to tap in with me. And that day I was at the studio doing some more songs. So when I left the studio, uh, it was about like ten some that night. And I called him. His assistant was just telling me 50 just jumped out the car going to like a meeting that he had to have about some business. So I was like, all right, just tell him to holler at me, bro. But I appreciate him for putting me up on Instagram and, you know, showing love. So when you do go through certain things that another person can relate to and they genuine and respectful, like they reach back out. And, um, you know, 50 Cent did that. And I respect it. Before all this and all the other shit I was doing back in the day, like we talking, texting, FaceTiming each other like randomly. It's just certain shit slowed up because of my doings. But he overlooked that after this situation that he's seen, like I'ma tap in with him and tap in with me. So I appreciate that, real talk. Well look man, it it sounds like it sounds like you really appreciate Hell yeah. Where where you are right now and how you're able to still see your daughter yeah and still see your family it's not like you have an incredible set of relatives who saved you yeah yeah can you say who it was yep god bless her it, who who uh do you know who actually went outside and saved you can you say who yeah that i know but i ain't gonna say her you name say like it? that okay, fair but enough. that's fine I, like that's uh, really my people's and yeah i joke with her clown with her you feel me Certain places she need to go, get to. She need a little dollars or whatever she need help with. Like, yeah. like that's my partner. Yeah, and you know, although this is still fresh in your mind, uh, I don't get the feeling that you're going to try to get revenge and and put yourself into a cycle and everything else like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Like I feel I said, like like you I'm, matured I'm, I'm from whatever. I'm leaving all that shit alone, bro. Yeah. Like my my focus is getting a real situation out here and being able to say okay, like he an A-list celebrity now. His mind right, his business up to par, his ice water brand popping. Yeah. His weed strands is selling good. Right. And he provide for his family in a real major way, you feel me? And putting on others. Yeah. And you got, I mean, you're a CEO of Ice Water? Yeah. Okay. And you mentioned the weed brand. Yeah. It's like pre-rolls and everything? I got pre-rolls with Cavi. Okay. I need, um, need some of those before you leave? Huh? <laughs> I, need, I need some of those before you leave? See, the cold thing about it, I ain't really got nothing on me, but mark my words, bro. I'll pull back up and give you a couple just cool. off the strength of just being a real nigga. You feel me? I got Straight you. Straight up. I, yeah? Okay. And you got a new project coming? Yeah, I got a new project coming. Um, well, the, first, the first song I'm about to drop off my new project is um, called Shake Back, and it's featuring Young Dolph. Okay. Like, like Dolph been tapping in with me for a while. Right, and so, Dolph went through that shooting himself. Yeah, yeah. In, in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. So okay. I feel me and him kind of got something in common, but before even all this and all his shit, he was just tapping in on some real nigga shit. Like, Slim, what's up? I like your mood and I like what you're doing. I want to work with you. I want to I wanna mess with you in. I was just busy running around doing me, hanging with the bro YG and just on our tip and doing what we doing. But now all this popped off and I'm sober, mind is right. I'm like, let's go on and go back to the drawing board and tap in with people that was tapping in with me. So the Shake Back Future of Dolph is like, like, it's a blessing, bro, and the song is hard, so we about to go on and push that with Empire and um, see where see where it leads to. That's what's up, man, and if you haven't, for everyone who's watching, check out the song Pyru. 
Oh, that's, yeah. a, that's a dope one, that's man. One of, that's, that's one of my top songs out here. Pyro. Yeah. Pyro. Yeah. The, the way, uh, who's the dude on the hook? Perion J. Key. Right. The way that's he, my partner the right way there. he rhymed corner of marijuana. Mm-hmm. It, I just never heard it rhyme like that before. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's two words that aren't supposed to rhyme. Yeah, that's yeah. like, he just like, <laughs> he rap a certain way and how he be harmonizing and kind of like singing yeah. type shit. That's my bro. He dope as fuck. And um, yeah. he bought, he working on his solo project, and we about to drop that up on the ice water. So I got some shit coming, man. I got some bros that's about to drop named Big Buddha and um, Follow JoJo. Yeah, I mean, they tape about to drop probably um, on the 7th. On the 2nd. August. Well, on the August 2nd. They about to drop. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it? Um, Chapo, Chapo from the Bay. Yep, which yep, El Chapo. He from Ice Water for the El Bay. Chapo. <laughs> El Chapo. <laughs> <laughs> my what's what's no, his name? My boy Chapo. Chapo. Okay. My boy Chapo. Chapo. Okay. My boy Chapo. He from Ice Water. Chapo. Yeah. Okay. My boy Chapo. He from Ice Water. Yeah, I mean Perry uh, Ice Water. Yeah, I mean follow JoJo, Big Buddha, Ice Water. I'm about to drop all they tapes under my under, under my label, bro, and get him a chance to you know. Do something different with their life, you know what I mean? Slim 400, man. I appreciate you coming in and telling your story. Yeah, I'm good looking. And, and not glorifying your story. You know, you didn't. Some people be like, yeah, you know, I got shot nine times. Motherfuckers can't touch me. I'm, I'm Superman. You know. See, when you do stuff like that, bro, you got to just look for something else to happen or something else going to pop off because you just too amped. You just too feeling like you Superman or somebody like, yeah. I don't go around acting like that, man. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm humble and collective, bro. And, um, you know, I, I'll take it how it comes. You feel me? Like, I done did hella wrong and, you know, messed up over the years. But, like I said, God gave me another chance to do right, man, and, and show show the public eye like, like he is somebody that we can look up to and, respect on another level now versus just oh he a street dude or he a gang member or all that's out man don't don't throw me in a box or under the bus you see what i'm saying i'm better than that that's what it is man i wish you the best of luck yeah. and uh you know i wish you growth and i wish your family well yeah and uh my congratulations on pulling through yep and well, i'm gonna be back real soon man to give you them pre-rolls bro i'm gonna right. check them out bro them ice water pre-rolls is okay. off the chain bro can't it wait it tastes like straight skittles okay For skittles real. i like that slim 400 man until next time yep hold up <laughs>